So um, they come kind of stocked with some different things, um, but obviously the vet can supplement with whatever um, they think is necessary. So like this is like ear cleaner and some extra gauze, which is always handy for doggos. Um, bandaging supplies. Um, we have like a compression bandage for them in case their one of their legs gets injured. Um, this is one of those. Uh, I'm not gonna open it because they're really annoying to put back together. Um, but it completely expands to be about this big, and then it attaches to a tube. Um, if the dog is having trouble breathing, they can be tubed um, and use this to give them breaths, so that the dog, if the dog isn't breathing on their own, you can give them manual breaths with this. Um, so just various things. There's a, they have activated charcoal in here for um, if the dog eats something toxic, um, which obviously they're around explosives and things a lot, right? So dogs like to put things in their mouth that they shouldn't. So um, that's one important thing. The other thing is to have something with them that they can use to make them vomit. So um, they actually make these really cool eye drops now that you put two eye drops in each eye and the dog vomits whatever it is they eat. So Ooh. if the dog swallows a toy, or something that can be thrown back up. They can make them vomit really easily. Um, and uh, so these are some things that the handler can do that they don't need a vet for. I mean, obviously they should take them to a vet three weeks sooner after that. But like the handler um, can do some things to help mitigate medical things for their dog as well. Uh, another really important thing for dogs is a thermometer. Um, so does anybody know what temperature dogs are normal at? That's a little. That's a little high. One. 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 Have heat stroke at 108, but be fine up until then. I've had dogs heat stroke at 103, so it's really dependent on the dog. Uh, but the handlers usually um, really know know their dogs really well and know their their working temperature. Um, what's your dog's working temp? This one. No, just okay. Well, I can take my last dog. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, so my last dog, he was kind of he was younger, but he would hit 158, and that was his like on the. That's it. Yeah. So he even knows it down to the decimal point. Like that's how well these guys know their dogs. What's Paco's working at? Probably one o'clock. One o'clock. So they they take their dog's temperature regularly. When we when we had dogs starting off in Africa, we would have them take their temperature at rest before training, after training, and two hours after training to to, to make sure that they were um, the dog was acclimating and see what they were doing while they were acclimating. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, they just have a bunch of various things in here. To, one is not like deployment stocked yet, but fluids in case the dog needs like is dehydrated and needs some fluids. Um, other stuff for bandaging. A splint in case they break their legs. Does the dog have these in their back too? Mm -hmm. So the dogs can carry some of their own things. They probably won't carry this because this is a warm up. But um, the dogs have uh, a lot of them work with a harness on, um, and they some handlers will put like a, a mini first aid kit for the dog in um, in their harness. So they make ones that are really flat, and they'll slide into a pocket in their harness um, where they can put like. A chest seal, some catheter, some like IV supplies, and a tourniquet, um, just for like immediately life saving life saving procedures in case the dog gets blown up or something. Okay. Um. So, and it's it. There's no standard for safety. So like with the military. Oh, yeah, I know. So that's typically what they'll wear, kind of, and you can attach a pouch on either side. You typically don't want to attach too much on there because yeah. the dog is. It's hot. Number one place like Iraq and Afghanistan, it's super hot, right? So, also, it got, they kind of, if you put too much stuff on there, it kind of gets begins to get caught on stuff as they go through thresholds and things like that. But this is typically what we kind of, kind of, when we're deploying, this is what they work in. This is their uniform, right? Has any of the dogs worn like bulletproof vests? 
So we have some here, but what you'll see is typically they get hotter quicker. And the hotter they get, the quicker they shut down and quit working. Um, so to get the most out of the dogs, we'll typically, you know, warm them in something like this or an even smaller one. Um, we have smaller ones that we used to in the summer um, that we'll use to just kind of use for detection and light work and things like that. That's awesome. There's also oh. other parts of the dog's uniform that they can get. They're not, I'm guessing they're not issued with doggles and like these. We have those. Yeah. 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 Are they issued or they're like. We, have, we issue them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, uh, unfortunately, there's no like. They're doing studies on better like vests and like harnesses and stuff for dogs, but a lot of them like restricts their movements. So movement. like. This is a pair of rec specs that we we use. Essentially, they're like snowboarding goggles for dogs. Um, we have ten, yeah, we have timid lenses and clear lenses. Um, but these we use these a lot here, especially with the high grass to protect their eyes, so we don't want anything to get in their eyes and causing damage or anything like that. Um, it's important on like aircraft too when they're on like they're going onto a helicopter or something like. The rotor wash is really dusty in here. We're on. Sorry. I was, a, I was at a point last year. And so it, was, it, was like, it was really windy out. So, like, Aww. wind and sand. It really helped his eyes out. Did you see picture? Yeah. Hey, a picture of a picture. Yes. <laughs> Taking video of a picture that's being taken by. And then also by. in these hot environments are, like, <laughs> our, our booties. So, like, to yes, protect so the little These are the booties they use. Um, <laughs> One thing about these, though, too, is kind of a downside. They do protect their their paws, but they also get super hot wearing these. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll actually feel like during the summer, if it's real hot, you'll take them off and you'll almost feel like they're sweating on the bottom of their pads. But these are good for the area, too. Um, we keep these for deployments, <coughs> things like that. And each team should get a set of these. Dogs just, they sweat through their paws or just through their mouths? Just through their mouths. So panting is how a dog, is, like, lets their feet escape. So that's um, one of the main things that we, um, that's another thing is um, whenever a dog comes into the vet clinic or um, gets handled, if it's, if it's injured and it's getting handled or something like that, we always put a muzzle on them first. Because like you saw, these dogs are trained to bite, they're trained to tear you apart. So if they're injured, they're unhappy, they're in pain, they're probably going to reflex to biting somebody. Um, hopefully not, but you know, it happens. And so we always put a muzzle on them first. However, if they're overheating and in heat stroke, uh, we want them to be able to pant. Um, so the, we put a muzzle on them to do any, like, placing an IV catheter or something like that, but the dog's just, like, we're trying to cool them down, bring them inside, and just let them lay down without a muzzle on and try not to put a muzzle on so that they can pant. And then the other medical piece of equipment that I actually just learned about when I was in Africa um, is a doggy litter. So oh. we have human litters, the big like stretchers that you can carry people on. Yeah. You can put a dog on, the, on those too, but they like lying on their side less than most physicians. So these litters have holes for their legs. So you put their legs in there, and then two people can carry the dog like this. And then it's basically like it's walking. So he's, I mean, it's, it's he's position. still like, oh my god, you're carrying me. I don't like this. But it's a more comfortable position than the dog being on its side. So And they fold up nice and small and go into, um, plus it's good for, um, even if the dog is like mobile or like if the dog broke its leg, like carrying it in this is better because then it's not walking the leg. Also, if it's been bitten by a snake, you want to immobilize the dog as much as possible um, so that the venom is not going throughout their body, so you can carry them in this instead so that they can not pump that venom through their veins. Of course, which as fast as the dog's blood is pumping, it's probably going to not be great anyway. But, you know, this helps. <laughs> How long do the dogs work? Like, like, um, eight years. Oh, so it kind of varies by each dog, right? Um, I've seen dogs retire at 11 years old, and those are typically those longer-lasting dogs or single-purpose dogs when they're only used for detection. 
the dual purpose dogs that do all the biting and then they also do protection. They last about nine to 10 sometimes. Uh, we just retired one here. His name was Grizzly. He was eight years old. He had some, some spine problems, but once they do retire, they are able to get adopted by previous handlers. So most of them go to uh, their handlers houses and they end up as couch puppies. Which is kind of cool because if, you know, someone breaks in your house, then boom. You know, <laughs> it's handled. Yeah. Don't even worry about it. Very cool. Well, this has been awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you guys for coming out. Thank you, Lizzie, for getting us here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Anytime. Oh, wait. He got sunglasses on. <laughs> All right, how bad is it out there? Are we ready to go out in it again? Thank you. That was fun. That was fun. Have a good one, everybody. Oh, sorry.